Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, another Lord's Day that thou hast given us. We thank you for thy word and for these men that thou hast raised up at precisely the right time, the ordained time, to stand against the onslaught of unbelief, lest thy church be swallowed up into the unbelief itself. And we pray for the same thing to take place in our age that thou wouldst raise up men to stand for the truth and against the lie. Pray that thou wouldst teach us and cause us to understand and believe. In the name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. Last week we dealt with... Were you all... Uh, Randy, were you guys with us last week or not? No. I don't think so. Right. So we're going to just review a little bit. Uh, we were talking about last week was chapter 21, we're on 22 this week, of religious worship and Sabbath day, and if you go back and listen to Gerstner's video on chapter 20, it's it's very helpful in some ways, where, especially where he speaks about uh, psalmody, and he basically, his position is that while he doesn't go in for exclusive, what they call exclusive psalmody, singing psalms and psalms alone, he basically says it should, it should come to pretty close to that. In other words, whereas he doesn't say that you cannot, under any circumstances, sing anything but the Psalms. Uh, you better not depart very far. But, but what I think Gerstner didn't understand was the slippery slope. Once, once the church begin, begins to sing hymns, it's not long before that's all they sing. Because they, they're, they're going to vote... That the congregation is going to determine what they want to hear. Isn't that what that guy said? The pastor that was here that visited you? That that was something that had to do with that? The, oh, you mean Dan? Yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. So, um, but Gerstner uh, made some... Uh, well, he made the same point that, that we make from time to time about the Psalms that they encompass all the affections, the, 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 the problems, the difficulties that the Christian faces and, the, and deals with all of them. And so the importance of singing the Psalms, he said that he was, uh, what was it? He was attending a church that the choir sang an anthem about uh, Matthew uh, what is it? Where uh, is it? Twenty five for the sheep and the goats, uh, and they sang solely about "Come, ye blessed of my Father." And he <laughs> and Gerstner goes up to the guy after the sermon. He said, "He said, uh, I'm so sorry, I won't be able to be here next week so that I can get the second half of the anthem." And the guy says, "What second half?" He said, "You know the part about depart from me, you cursed." And he said, "That's not in there." Yeah, right. So they don't want to hear. Uh, but one side of the story, as it were. Another thing that, that Gerster mentioned that was one thing I like about this guy is he's frequently not scared to ruffle feathers. He said he was talking to a group of, I guess it was seminary students or something, where he said about the Sabbath that if you, he put it this way. He said, and I like the way he put it, he said, this Westminster Confession is not Scripture. So, we're not, uh, it's not the infallible Word of God. But then he added, but if they're correct in their statement about keeping on the Sabbath, he said, 80% of you men, seminary students, have done nothing your whole life but desecrate the Sabbath. (sighs) <laughs> Pretty strong statement. He said, if they're right about the keeping of the Sabbath. And uh, 
he talked about an instance of where uh, he had a job where the, the his boss said, "Well, we're gonna next week we're going to do the books, and so we're gonna ask you to come in on Sunday." And so he says to his boss, "Is there any other what? Is there any other day?" Is it possible? I mean, imagine talking to a heathen, and there's no way it's going to go right over his head. Is, is it possible for this to be done on any other day? And the guy had asked him three or four times, "What's he? What are you talking about?" And he come to find out and that that uh, of course it's possible to do it. Any other. We do want to do it then. And he said he got out of it because the, the his boss found out he was a seminary student, so he allowed him not to come in. But uh, his point being that. That the Sabbath is not uh, is not a day for us to uh, it's a rest from our labors. All right, chapter twenty two of lawful oaths and vows, paragraph one. Elizabeth, a lawful oath is a part of religious worship, wherein upon justification the person swearing. Solemnly calleth God to witness what he asserted or promised, and to judge him according to the truth or falsehood of what he swore. All right, so these guys believed in defining their terms. A part of religious worship, wherein upon just occasion, the person swearing solemnly calleth God to witness what he asserteth or promiseth and to judge him according to the truth or falsehood of what he sweareth. I was watching Gerster on this section also where he pointed out the fact that in our society today people think nothing of standing, standing in a court of law and put, put, putting their hand on the Bible and then immediately proceeding to tell lies. Just, what's that? They don't have a Bible. Yeah, they, pro- they probably don't yeah, probably don't even have that anymore. I all the time to get testimony. I've never seen the Bible. Not yeah, there you go. So uh, raise your hand now. It's nice to be it's Yeah. That's not the word for now. That's what? It's just a formality. Yeah, of course. Stock in that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, which means people are not interested in truth. Truth doesn't mean anything. Well, yeah, when you, mean that there is no justice. When you see how at the trial is the, the, the pr- proceedings are carried out, you shake your head even stronger. The, the, the judicial system in the United States has nothing whatsoever to do with justice. Imagine that. And we say man isn't as bad as he can be. Yeah. Uh, it's only got one purpose. Yeah, for lawyers. For attorneys to make a living. Yeah. A living? How about a killing? <laughs> yeah. Morgan and Morgan. All right. Second paragraph, Kenneth. The name of God only is that by which men ought to swear, and therein it is to be used with all holy fear and reverence. Therefore, to swear vainly or rashly by that glorious and dreadful name, or to swear at all by any other thing, is sinful and to be abhorred. Yet, as in matters of weight and moment, an oath is warranted by the word of God under the New Testament as well as under the Old. So a lawful oath being imposed by lawful authority in such matters ought to be taken. All right. Um, You'll notice here that they use the word swear. This is going out of, as we speak, this is disappearing from our language, but when I was a kid... The older people would say such and such a person was swearing like a sailor. They would use that word, swear. Mm-hmm. Don't even use it hardly. It's, it's almost, like I said, it's, it's almost disappeared. But whereas they say to swear vainly or rashly. See, when a guy says he was swearing like a sailor, 
they understood at the time that those words that we call bad words, um, such as whatever connected to the word to, to God, uh, is, is an oath. You're saying that you're calling down you're calling down so all right so which brings up the the question why is it totally unex, not only unacceptable but totally unacceptable when i was a kid i couldn't have answered this question to say g o d d a m n don't we believe that god damns sinners mm -hmm. we believe that don't we well then why is that bad and what's the answer all name because you're not using it with reverence and fear. Okay, that's and one thing. And what's another thing? Anybody? We, have, we don't have that authority. Right. You're, you're setting up yourself in the place of God. Who are you? And, and it's not only people. When something happens of a negative nature, right? So they're saying... Well, basically, what are they saying when they use that phrase? Get it? Or they don't, don't even... Here's, here's what... Uh, people, e even now, as decadent as we, as we become, even now, a lot of people will, will use the use will leave the God out and just use the the D A M N word. Right. But there's no difference. I mean, who, who other than God, who has the authority to damn anything or anyone? Nobody. So, they, they, hey, you haven't gotten yourself out of anything by leaving God out of, of the phrase. Oh, God bless. Charge <laughs> with the blessing of God to say God bless. Hello. Yeah, that's a good point. A very good point. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah, there's the flip side of the coin. That's the point I'm making right here. You're placing yourself in the place of God to say this shouldn't exist, right? You hit a bad shot in tennis or golf or whatever. And you and you and that comes out of your mouth. We went to the tournament yesterday, and somebody hit a bad shot. You don't, I know. I mean, they they fine you for this, but I guess since there was no, there's almost nobody following the group. He thought he could get away with it, and he said that Jesus Christ's name. So, but all of these things are related. You're calling down the curses of heaven on something that you don't agree with or that you don't like. You're setting yourself up in the place of God. And in the same, by the same token, as Randy just pointed out, God bless. Yeah, hey, God curses people. Who are you, who are you to call, call the name of God, call a blessing on someone from God when you don't know if they're elect or reprobate? Of course, we say to the people of God because we're speaking, and, and, hey, and the Baptists can't even understand this, Right? When we call the blessing, even though with the, the benediction at the uh, the Lord bless thee and keep thee, the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be and be gracious unto thee. Do you think those guys didn't know that there were people they were talking to that were reprobate? They knew it. They're calling down the blessings of God on the people of God, which God does himself. But they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. That's what these guys knew. So, but the Baptist doesn't understand that. Because he considers, he doesn't understand uh, uh, covenantal, the covenantal idea. So, where were we? Men ought to swear and therein is to be used with holy, with all holy fear and reverence, which is almost completely disappeared from this country. Therefore, to swear vainly or rashly by that glorious and dreadful name. So, and what is the first thing that a person says? If you ever question it, when he does that, and you say, uh, whatever, in the neg negative to what he just did. You're taking the, the God's name in vain. And what do they immediately say? Huh? No, August. By way of, no, not, a, yeah, of course they don't like you, but they don't frequently say that. What do they say? You were, they say I didn't mean anything by it. Well, <laughs> that's the entire prohibition, right? That you never take the name, the, the name of God is so important. 
that it must always be used with reverence. It cannot be used without me, without meaning something by it. That's the point. That remember the uh, the uh, in the Old Testament, the, the the Jews were afraid to use the name Jehovah because they had that concept that it was so reverent. It was so other than the scribes would put down the pen and pick up another pen when they wrote his name and put that back and pick up the other pen because they had a concept of the awesomeness, the holiness, the weight, as they say. Look at that. It's simple to be a word. Yes, as in matters of weight and moment, an oath is warranted by the word of God under the New Testament as well as under the Old. So a lawful oath being imposed by lawful authority in such matters, ought to be taken. It's such a serious thing. All right. Paragraph 3, Maureen. Whosoever taketh an oath ought duly to consider the weightiness of so solemn an act, and therein to avouch nothing, but what he is fully persuaded is the truth. Neither may any man find himself by oath to anything but what is good and just, and what he believeth so to be, and what he is able and resolved to perform. Yet is it a sin to refuse an oath touching anything that oh, is good and just, out. being imposed by lawful authority. All right. Read that one. Yeah, yeah, read that last right one. after the word perform, yeah. my American version stops. Yeah, read, so read that afterwards and see, see if we can figure out why the they word would perform. Yeah. Yet is it a sin to refuse an oath touching anything that is good and just being imposed by lawful authority. Oh, right. Yeah, so they want to give these people an out and say, oh, no, I don't swear by. It. No. You should. So, how um, does that fit in, by the way, with, I'm just trying, I'm thinking about. All right, what about the Fifth Amendment? Right. The right against self-incrimination. You don't have to say anything. Well, what if the magistrate says, tell me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it, do those... Gee, I wonder why they took that out. I Neither may any man bind himself by oath to anything but what is good and just. Now, we think about, and Gerstner was pointing this out also, about the... A monastic vow. I had forgotten what a monastic vow is. What is a monastic vow? People that go into the monastery and don't speak for... No, no, no. A monastic vow means you are vowing never to marry. Mm. See, when you go in a monastery, right? You go to the cloister... And you, and so he was he was so, and apparently and I remember this I, I I mean I I'm old enough to remember that that was something in the in the Protestant world when I was a kid that people would um, would like people like people that were in seminary and stuff they would vow certain pastors never to marry or certain people that were preparing for some kind of and it was, a, yeah, I, I think it was just another form of self-righteousness. Oh, I'm going to uh, vow to be so dedicated to God that I'm this and this. And, 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 and once again, Gerstin was right on it on this one, where he said that, uh, he said, whether, whether, he, whether that person kept the vow, whether he broke it, is of no consequence. It was sinful for him to, ma- to make it, because... How does he know? And what's next? Huh? Why is it simple to make him an act even if you're not going into a monastery? It's simple for a person to say, okay, I vow before God that I am not, ne- I'm never going to marry. Huh? Well, it's presumptuous. It has to do with, uh, I think the seventh paragraph in here basically answers that question. Oh, really? Sixth or seventh? That's yeah, exactly as presumptuous. Yeah. That you're presuming that God is going to give you the gift of celibacy. Once again, right? You're putting yourself in the... Hey, if he doesn't... Guess what? If he doesn't give it to you, guess who doesn't have it? 
Yeah. And yeah. if you don't have it, then that you vowed to do something that's sinful. Paragraph 7 speaks mm-hmm. sp- specifically of monastical vows. Oh, does it? Yeah. It's paragraph 7. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we got to it too early. We can hit it again when we get <laughs> when we get to it. Okay. Paragraph 4, Kelly. An oath is to be taken in the plain and common sense of the words, without equivocation or mental reservation. It cannot oblige to sin, but in anything not sinful be taken, it binds to performance, although to a man's own hurt, nor is it to be violated, although made to heretics or infidels. That's an important point too, right? How about that? So the guy says, well, I made that to a heretic. So uh, that, that I said, okay, I'm going to meet you, or I'm going to sell this at such and such a price, and you change your mind, and you say, well, the price went up. No, you told him you were going to sell him for A, and hello, right? So, uh, so I think Gerstner addressed that issue also. You know, the scripture says he vows to his own hurt, and that uh, I think he said he he call some guy to do something to work on his house or something and the guy said he was going to be there at such and such a time on Monday at a certain time and the guy never showed up Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday and he come to find out later the reason he didn't show up is he found something that was going to be more lucrative that day so uh, he vowed in a real sense to, to do something that he didn't do because he was going to get something uh, Better. Paragraph 5. Kenneth. A vow is of the like nature with a promissory oath and ought to be made with the like religious care and to be performed with the like faithfulness. All right. Is that all there is to it? Okay. And so here is the definition of promissory oath. The term that is given to swearing to God that a promise will be fulfilled. All right, so he's saying basically it's one and the same thing. I remember, we all remember where where have you heard the the phrase promissory oath? I have a I have a dream oh. speech, oh, oh, and the I have a dream speech that forty acres and a mule is <laughs> supposed to give them by God. So, uh, Martin Luther King remembered that one. So, uh, and it ought to be made with the like religious care and to be performed with the like faithfulness. So, so what is this whole, what is this whole chapter really exposing? What are we, 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 we're, we're feeling it, aren't we? Everybody's a liar. Right? Everybody, right? Everybody's dishonest. Look at it. I mean, this and this and this. Number one, the importance that we do. If you want it, doesn't want to do it. And, and, and then when we do it, uh, carrying through with it. I remember a guy that, uh, I, oh, yeah, I remember a Bill Gothard. I attended a Bill Gothard conference, and he was actually giving putting people on a guilt trip in a certain sense. I was a young kid. I was like 13, 14 years old. Bill Gothard. You don't know Bill Gothard? Not oh, Gothard. Institutes of Basic Youth Conflicts. They oh, call it something oh, else there. D on the end? Yeah. Oh, Gothard. Okay. Gothard. Bill Gothard. Yeah. And he was basically encouraging you to vow that you would read the Bible every day. And and I did it. But hey, come on. You you're you, you're traveling somewhere, right? You're traveling somewhere, and 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 uh, for whatever reason, you didn't get, you didn't bring your Bible. You didn't get it out just before you fell off, nodded off to sleep in the car or something. And uh, and it's a serious thing to make an oath. And who's gonna who's going to be able to keep that oath that you're going to read three chapters of the Bible every day for the rest of your life, right? Are you going to be? <laughs> So, paragraph 6, whole name. It is not to be made to any creature, but to God alone, and that it may be accepted, it is to be made voluntarily, out of faith and conscience of duty, in way of thankfulness for mercy received, or for the obtaining of what we want, 
whereby we more strictly bind ourselves to necessary duties or to other things, so far and so long as they may fitly conduce thereunto. Okay. So there it is again, what I was just talking about. Uh, but to God, and that it may be accepted, and that it may be accepted by God. It is to be made voluntarily. You don't put people on guilt trips out of faith and conscience of duty in the way of the thankfulness for mercy received or for the obtaining of what we want, whereby we more strictly bind ourselves to necessary duties or to other things so far and so long as they may fitly conduce thereunto. Well, part of that's why with the second point, because it says, right. so a lawful oath being imposed by lawful authority. As compared to voluntarily. Well, I think he's saying... Voluntarily means you volunteer. Yeah, uh, what I think he's saying is that there are some cases in which... um, Just asking for clarity. Where it's acceptable for them to... uh, Well, that's... I think that's a good illustration. That What's the difference? Is Bill Gothard is not a magistrate and he, and there's no um, he ha- doesn't have this authority to, to put to give put, put you know well nobody does it put you on a guilt trip well he wasn't a magistrate he was a magistrate <laughs> <laughs> okay so um, last paragraph no man may vow to do anything forbidden in the word of God or what would hinder any duty therein commanded, or which is not in his own power, and for the performance whereof he had no promise of ability from God. In which respects, Pope is so... You, you, behind the scenes, you've always got it, right? <laughs> behind the scenes, what are they talking about? Yeah. No man may vow to do anything forbidden in the word of God, or what would hinder any do so there you go right there initially initially you're you're so you cannot they say you put scripture uh, tradition is on par with scripture no as soon as you say that tradition trumps scripture and so whatever they tell you to do you do or what would hinder any duty therein commanded or which is not in his own power and for the performance whereof he hath no promise of ability from God if it's against God's word then guess what God's not going to going to uh, give you the power that's an interesting well try to let you finish the verse before or the, the paragraph before I ask yeah in which respects popish monastical vows of perpetual single life professed poverty there's another one and regular obedience. So if you hey, if you profess poverty, then hey, I can't do that. I might make some money. And regular obedience are so far from being degrees of higher perfection that they are superstitious and sinful snares in which no Christian may entangle himself. I was going to say to that, uh, and for the performance whereof he hath no promise of ability from God, how would you square that with, uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? That's an excellent question, and I, I believe the answer isn't that difficult to come by, and that is all things, well, once again, the word all, all means all, it always means all. It never means anything but all. Whoever doubted that it does. The, 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 <laughs> the, the, thing, the thing to be pointed out is that all sometimes means all without distinction and sometimes it means all without exception. So I can do all things, not all without exception, because some things are sinful. And Christ is going to strengthen you to commit sin. So, we, so right, right. So, this is teaching us to read Scripture too. When you read Scripture, in order to understand, like we were saying it t- today in the message, uh, that um, that that uh, what was the what was the word that the, the, the no the word that uh, yeah. 
that was such uh, was it Matthew 16, 18? I think that's the passage. Let's look at that and see if that's the uh, tell. Yeah, tell. <laughs> yeah. So to 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 distinguish, right? So to to interpret scripture, not only must you uh, understand what it says, but according to the analogy of faith, which is what uh, the, the idea that. Scripture, scripture, scripture interprets it. Right. Scripture Word interprets it. Scripture. scripture. Right. So, for you to know what the passage means, you have to know what, and one of the first considerations is, what can it not mean? Right? I can do all things through Christ with strength. It can't mean that you can sin through the ability and the power that Christ gives you. No. Well, and, so, and then what, what does it mean? Well, the context of that Paul says is I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And he says I can do all things. Obviously, it refers to what he just talked about. Mm -hmm. it, I, if I say I'm going to build a 500-foot a tower by myself, does that mean... That that I can do that because I can do all. No, it means yeah. you got to go to the context of scripture. You can't just take the scripture. You, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, specifically in that passage, though not limited to this, you are you have the power through Christ to endure right. whatever he's a situation he's placed us in. That's right. But not limited to that idea. We have power to do what God has commanded us to do and and which carries with it the idea that um, you it's incumbent upon us to know what God's commanded us to do and he does not put us in places that we can not there's a verse of scripture says, you know that we are not asked you will to go above get all with that right huh? yeah. what are you going to say I think you, you you kind of said it. Yeah. Uh, the last thing. I... Well, how did that enter? I forget how you tied that to. Oh, I, uh, where it says uh, that we are not to um, vow to do anything, the performance of which he has not promised. We have not been promised ability from God. So how does that? Mm, yeah, right. Whereof he hath no promise, no promise of ability from God. And so I, and Gerson was talking about that whether or not this person keeps that vow of celibacy. He said it's it's uh, it's uh, academic. Yeah, doesn't matter. It was sinful because the ability to, uh, celibacy is a gift of God, and you can't say that he's that, that you maybe you you might temporarily have it right. Who's going to say ten years down the road or whatever? And you already vowed to live a life of celibacy. Okay, anything else? Any questions? Serious stuff. Oaths and vows. What 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 a society we live in. When you when you ask somebody, I remember this was like this was 30 years ago. I was complaining to the pastor of the church I attended in seminary. And I was complaining to God. I said, God tells you he's going to be there and he doesn't show up. And I remember him saying to me, well, what he, what he meant was, unless I find something better to do. Yeah, that's exactly right. right? I'll be there, meaning unless I find something better. This is a, you bring a point, a point of, I uh, had a house in Port Orton, and I was going to this Baptist church, and uh, I was talking to a guy, who was a painter, and I said, oh, I'm going to be painting my house. And at that time, I wasn't, you know, into a lot of painting, because I was a truck driver. So he says, well, I'll paint your house. He says, I'm in need of finance, but I'll paint your house for free if you lend me $700, and I'll pay you back. So, guess what? You know, I jumped at that, right? I mean, he's going to paint my house for free. All I need to do is lend him $700, and I buy the materials, and he comes and paints the house. 
Well, I mean, obviously I was wrong. But anyway, the thing about it is that when the time came, he never paid me. You know, and I, so I went to the pastor. Do you remember the church I went to? So I went to the pastor. And you know what the pastor said to me? You should have known better. Uh -huh. And obviously he was right. But he never said, well, let, we can deal, you know, we'll deal with this from a spiritual, you know, point. Didn't make a hell of a He says you should have known better than to trust a brother. <laughs> and then he says we're going to deal with this from a... No, no, I said I'm saying oh, that why oh, we, instead of saying that... He, he didn't, they didn't do anything. No, no. no. Um, that's, uh, that's exactly what you were pointing out. People have been making commitments, you know, especially, you know, to someone who's uh, supposedly a brother. That goes out that goes out the window when you're talking about this. But you know. Yeah, well, Christians are to be people who are men of their word because of what? Because we are what is that? Yeah. Quorum well, Deo we to, that somebody said. Accountable to God. We're always in the presence of God. That's what we believe. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this another Lord's Day, for the time together, thank you for thy word. We thank thee that thou dost cause us to, to be able to commit ourselves and to be people who are trustworthy because we serve a God who says thou shalt not bear false witness and we, by thy grace, fear thee and... Uh, are determined by thy grace to live lives pleasing to thee, especially in this area. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. So even your copy doesn't have that last clause. Which one? Usually it gives it in italics. Right. Which, which one? one. Wait, which one? The one on the paragraph four. Uh -huh. Three. Three. Three.